Oh, that turned out excellent. Anodized aluminum, business cards or thank you cards. Today on Laser Nug. You're probably in the same boat I am now. You've had the bolt for a few weeks or a month. You're slowly learning those features in light burn and you're just chomping at the bit to try different types of materials. So was I. So we're gonna do some anodized aluminum cards today. I'll show you how to do it, where to find the settings. And if you are new to the bolt and you don't know the list of different materials that this machine can engrave or cut, I'll show you where to find that. Let's go. I am really happy with the performance of this bolt so far. The laser is so precise and exact and it cuts so cleanly and engraves so cleanly. I went up on Amazon because I just wanted some test materials and I found some of these anodized aluminum business cards. I also found some aluminum that are coated or painted. I'm not sure what they're coated with. I don't think it's anodized. Either way, the same settings work for both. I'm trying out different thicknesses because I wasn't sure what type or what thickness of card I want to use, whether it's for thank you cards uh, in packages, whether it's for business cards to sell. This is your 0.5 millimeter card and it's really firm. In fact, I picked up some one mil as well. I think that's gonna be way too thick, but probably good for signs on the wall or on pieces of equipment. But for business card stock, that is a nice firm card. And some of the better quality ones will come with a mask across the top. There'll be a plastic wrap that you could peel off. This is also an aluminum alloy, much cheaper. This anodized card at half a millimeter, 80 by 50, it was about $1.30 per card. So I got a small quantity just to test out. This guy here, it's coated. It is aluminum alloy. And this is 0.2 millimeters. And as you can see, it's much more flexible, but it's still very firm. You won't bend it or snap it by any means. And it also engraves really nicely. Before we go any further, I'm gonna show you where to find the materials list for this bolt in case you haven't found it already. And you're going through different materials trying to decide, can I engrave that? Is it safe to engrave? Let me show you where to find the list. Jump on your internet. If you pull up thunderlaser.ca, that's Thunder Laser Canada's website. From the home page, choose your machine. You're gonna click on the Thunderbolt. And if you scroll right down until you get to the suggested articles at the bottom, come over to the third one, it says Thunderbolt reviews or what do customers think of the bolt? If you click on that and scroll down, you'll see a few reviews, but below that it says common questions about the Thunderbolt. And down under this list, you will see Right down towards the bottom, it says, what types of materials can I cut with the bolt? If you click on that, you'll get a grid, number of different materials, and it'll tell you whether you can engrave or cut those materials. If I scroll down here, you'll see on the second list under materials, it says anodized aluminum. And you can engrave it, but you can't cut it. What I did myself, I just right click that, I saved that file to my desktop, so I have it for reference at any time. Before we go into light burn, if you have not picked up one of these small micrometers, I'd, I'd strongly recommend you do. What I have learned as I'm going through a lot of these materials, whether they're tumblers or bowls, or even these small anodized aluminum cards or sheets, often the dimensions that the manufacturer provides are not exact. So in other words, you might get a tumbler that says it's three and a half inches in diameter, but if you measure it out, it's actually 3.47 inches in diameter. And that makes a big difference when you're working in light burn because it doesn't know to round things. If you put in three and a half, it's gonna assume it's three and a half. Similar to these cards, when you're trying to make up your thank you cards or your business cards, or whatever you're using to test out the bolt and to learn new skills, It'll tell you it's 80 millimeters by 50 millimeters, but sometimes it's 81 millimeters or 79 millimeters by 48 millimeters. So it always helps to grab this little micrometer. They're very inexpensive. I think you can get them at any hardware store or Home Depot. 
just pick one up. I think it'll save you a lot of trouble. This one was quite a bit off from the actual measurements that they gave me when I bought it off of Amazon, but I checked it with the micrometer and made sure I had the right measurements in Lightburn. So I have my Lightburn open. I won't take you through all of the steps of me putting in the text and those kind of things or the logos, uh, because I think you're probably at or beyond the step I am of learning. But I did create a business card, so I'm just going to come up the top here. I'm going to click open. I am going to grab that business card. And I'm just going to make it a little bigger so we can all see it. And there's my card. All I've done is I measured off my business card. I entered those rough width and heights here in the top left hand corner of the toolbar. I left it locked so I could keep that aspect ratio and I created a card just a simple thank you card. A couple of things to note some of you might be wondering how I rounded these corners to make it look just like the business card because when you create that rectangle it'll be squared. I might offer if you have not subscribed to a YouTube channel called Carl Lewis he provides a lot of tips on different features and how to use them in Lightburn and he just released a video a couple of days ago and you have two ways to do this if you go down here to the left corner of your toolbar you'll see the radius command here in the bottom you can use that radius command as he'll show you to round these corners the way I did it is if you come across to the right hand side of your screen you have your tabs here in the middle of the page at the right side is shape properties if you don't have that tab, then I'll take you up here to the window tab at the top of the screen. And if you run down, you just want to look for shape properties, click it, and it'll show up. If you're going to use shape properties, first thing to do is to ungroup this. And if I grab just my outline, you'll see at the bottom here on the right under shape properties, it says corner radius and whenever you click it it's going to change the radius of those corners now i happen to like what i had there so i'm just going to put that back 0 0.4 oops 0 0.04 i think it was 0 0.04 that's better and then i'm back back in business as another aside something i learned from carl this week is you'll see I have the QR codes here for different things. One is for my other YouTube channel, and the other one is for a website where I sell products and you can leave a review. I grabbed that URL. I didn't know until two days ago, but if you go under Tools here at the top and you scroll down, right around the middle it says Create QR Code. I won't take you through that, but it's really simple. And if you take a look at Carl Lewis's page, he just released that video this week and it's really simple to do. The important thing I wanted to leave you with is that there's gonna be a number of different websites where you can create a QR code, whether it's for your website, uh, contact information, uh, an email, whatever, and they'll try to charge you money for it. QR codes are commonplace now, and there's a ton of different free websites that will create your QR code for you, including now I found out right here, resident in Lightburn. But you should give it a shot. It's pretty cool and it's very quick. Either way, I have my business card now. I'm just going to make sure everything is grouped again because I can't remember if I did. There, I didn't. So we're going to group everything. I have my dimensions. If I come over here to the right hand side on cut layers, you'll see I've created a tool layer again, which you remember is down at the bottom. You've got a, an orange and a kind of a teal blue layer that start with a T. If I scroll you over in the window here at the top right, you'll see it says frame and there's no output. I just use that as a guide so I know what size space I'm working with. I've put in my various aspects here. I've got a logo, a little bit of writing, a couple of QR codes. And now you're probably thinking, so what are the settings, GP? Well, let me show you. For those of you that have been following the channel, you'll remember a few videos ago, I showed you where you can find a materials list on Thunder Laser USA's knowledge base. If you missed that video, I'll put a link to it right up here. But it's a great idea to load that library because it comes with a number of different materials. And I've loaded it. If you come down here to the bottom right, 
I'm going to click on the library, and there's my library. If you look down that list, there's metal business cards right there. I have an engrave already set up in there, and if you remember with the library, all I want to do here is highlight my object or my design, click my fill layer so it's highlighted. I'm going to click on engrave in the library, and all I want to do is assign those settings to my fill layer. And it's as simple as that. For me personally, I made a couple of changes, and I wanted to show that to you. And by all means, you can try it with the default values they gave you, or you can use the ones that I've come up with after you see the output. I think you might be happier with it. If you double click on your 00, zero or your black layer, the 500 millimeters per second, the 20 and 20 powers were all defaulted. What I changed was I increased my lines per inch to 400 because it was down around 300 and I've just found that the 400 gives you a much cleaner engrave and no spaces between the lines. The other thing you'll find is on the default, I think it might have been an error, they created it as a cut layer or a line layer and unless I'm in mistaken, it should be an engrave layer. So I changed the mode here in the middle to fill. It was set to line, I changed it to fill. Seems to be working fine. I'll click OK. If you've made these changes, don't forget to come down here to the bottom right hand side and click Save. So now I have settings. I've got my design. I'm going to go down to the bottom here, click back on the laser window. I'm ready to go. My user origin is in the top left, which is where I'd like it. Let's cut a card. I've already engraved on both the coated aluminum card as well as this anodized aluminum card. And I'm going to show you the outputs, three different outputs. I'd recommend that you peel off this plastic mast before you engrave. By all means, you can try both methods at home. Uh, it, it's not going to do anything if you leave it on. I originally was leaving it on because that protects the surface. However, I found that the engraving did not come out as clean and as brilliant, so to speak. It also leaves a little bit of gluey finishes on the card. I'll show it to you in a second. Meantime, card's up. I'm going to place it down into the bolt. We're going to want to make sure that this is parallel to the gantry in order that the laser doesn't run off the edge of the card. If I was making a whole bunch of them, I would start learning how to make templates. But right now, I just want to make sure it's squared up. Piece of wood here. I'm going to bring my laser down. This is where the nudge command comes in handy on your manual screen. Because I just want to get it to the side here. I think that'll do it. I hope you can see the laser indicator. It's right here in the top left corner. I'm going to set that as an origin. And before I go any further, I want to frame the piece to make sure that the laser is lined up or the, the business card is lined up with the laser. I think we're good. Catches the edge, so I'll leave that as the origin. Let's autofocus our piece. Let's engrave our card. That is a really nice, clean, sharp engrave. I just don't want to hold it too close because I think the camera may not be able to focus properly, but that's what she comes out like. A couple of things I wanted to share with you though. 
I wanted to show you this side-by-side -side comparison. This one on the right, I did not remove the mask. I didn't peel that off. I engraved through it, and it does engrave through it very cleanly, actually. This one is the one where I removed the mask. Hopefully you can see it because in the naked eye, it is very, very noticeable. The engraving on this card is much, I would say, it's very dull compared to the brilliance of the one here on the left. The second thing is the one on the left here that I removed the mask from requires absolutely no cleanup. It comes out this bright and brilliant and crisp. There is no residue, nothing left on it. Once it's engraved, it's done. However, the card where I left the mask on, I found in a couple of tiny spots here and there, there was a bit of glue perhaps, or I think kind of a bit of the sticky stuff off it was left. I had to clean it with some multi cleaner to get it off. Not to mention, it's difficult to see it because it's a little bit more dull. The engraving is, doesn't really pop off the card as well as it does here on the left. This black card that's coated, it's not anodized, I'm, I'm almost positive. Look at how clean and crisp that came out. It's also much easier to read. I didn't realize that this card was silver in color because although it looks nice, you kind of have to turn it the right way in the light to be able to read the words or to see what's on the card. Whereas the black has an immediate contrast. These black ones were kind of one of the cheapest ones I found on Amazon. So they did not come with any type of a mask over it. They just came the way you see them here. But the exact same settings were used on this card, on the bolt, as I used on this card. And you can see having a colored card provides a much better contrast for someone to read it. Much better. So that'll wrap it up for the day. I know it was kind of quick today, but I just wanted to give you something else that I've tried that really worked out well. By all means, like anything, try your own settings if you'd like, but hopefully this gives you a great place to start. And these cards are pretty inexpensive if you get a small pack. One word of caution, as you know on Amazon, there are pages and pages of similar materials. You will find the same types of cards, probably made by the same company, at different price points. Just take a few extra minutes and click through each page because I found, especially with these cards here, the second pack, there are some ads there selling them for a third or two times the price that you'll find if you just go through the pages and start comparing, you'll get them a lot cheaper. Good luck with the project. Let me know how it turned out or if you find some other settings that you feel work better. Have a great week. Please be kind to each other and I hope I see you on the next one. Cheers.